double take availability 5.3 ESX VM to VM protection failover failback test failover and undo what we're going to look at here is double takes new V to V protection mechanism this basically allows protection of a whole bunch of virtual machines um, simultaneously can that can be protected from an ESX host to a remote ESX host and can be failed back very simply as well now this allows us to fail over many virtual machines simultaneously we can also do test failovers we can reverse the projection so we can fail back and we can do uh, undo uh, failovers if we've completed a test failover so what we're really looking at is a real alternate to SRM and we're also able to fail over different types of protection jobs so we could fail over virtual machines or we could fail over physical machines or Hyper-V machines all with the same click of the mouse. On the screen I've got the Double Take console open, the new Double Take 5.3 console. I have a couple of uh, Hyper-V jobs already running but um, I'm not really concerned with those at this stage. I want to configure protection for a couple of virtual machines running on ESX. I'm going to use the get started wizard and then select double take availability and select protect multiple ESX virtual machines. I can use, I can use virtual center server or specify the ESX server I wish or, but I'll, I'll use virtual center server to browse for the ESX server that hosts the virtual machines I want to protect. I can see the whole list of virtual machines, but I have two in particular I'm, I'm concerned with, Site A Server 1 and Site A Server 2. And then I'm going to choose the ESX host where I want to replicate those servers to. I'm then prompted to specify a virtual recovery appliance virtual machine running on the target ESX host that has double take installed. I provide credentials and hit the next button. I'm then asked to select a reverse virtual recovery appliance. This is a, a, an appliance that will be used when we're failing back to the production network. Again, I provide credentials and hit the next button. I can now choose where on the target ESX server I'd like to store the replica virtual machines. Which data store would I like to store them in? I can also configure my network mapping to make sure that the target ESX networks match up with the ESX networks on the source host. I can also specify a dedicated network route to send the replication traffic through if I wish. I hit the next button and the double take will, will verify the protection job. When I hit the finish button double take is going to push out the double take agent from the console to the servers being protected. It is then going to use the virtual appliance to configure a replica virtual machine which uh, will have D VMDK files, disks, that will be attached to the uh, virtual recovery appliance and then we'll configure a double take connection to replicate the data directly into those VMDK files. So the replication of the data might take some time so I will now skip ahead to the point where the mirror has been completed and the servers are protected. So the two servers are now protected. I could do a failover for to live data or a test failover of an individual server but before I do any failovers I'm just going to make some changes, um, simple changes to the two servers. I'm going to create a file on the desktop, um, a rich text document and call it uh, critical data. I'm going to do that to both servers. Um, I'm just going to power off the virtual machine. So I've really just made a change and I've powered off the virtual machine. I'm doing exactly the same with the second virtual machine. So I'm going to make the change to the desktop and then power it off. Now I could wait for double take to detect the failure, um, but I I know the I've, the servers have failed, so I'm going to quickly hit select two servers simultaneously and click fail over. You can fail over to the live version of the data. So the virtual recovery assistant is actually going to 
disconnect itself from the VMDK files that belong to the replica virtual machine. It is then going to instruct ESX server, virtual center server to start up that replica virtual machine. After just a couple of minutes, we can see that the protection status has changed to failed over. And we can actually go and verify uh, in VMware that the replica virtual machines have come online. I'm going to quickly take a look in vCenter. I can see um, my copies of site server one and copy of site server two. If I log into uh, the servers, as expected, I can see the file on the desktop called critical data. Um, I get a obviously a shutdown event tracker message. Now at this stage, I would verify that my databases or my exchange or whichever server I was protecting is functioning properly. When I'm ready, I can actually reverse the connection. I can basically this, this is a very simple fail back. So I'm going to reprotect the server by replicating it back to the original ESX host. I can do multiple servers at the same time. And we're basically doing a reverse of the original protection job. However, because the majority of the data on the original ESX host is identical, the remirror is going to take a lot less time and it's going to send a lot less data over the network. This uses double takes block checksum remirror. Once the reverse protection job has actually completed its remirror back to the original ESX host, we can fail back. Now this would be a graceful fail back. So we're going to shut down the source server and bring up the replica. Now on the second server, I can show you a test failover. So instead of doing a live failover, I'm going to select perform a test failover. Difference between a live failover and a test failover. First of all, the test failover will not shut down the source virtual machine. Also, it will not connect the replica virtual machine to the network when it powers it on. Now, because we're not going to connect the test failover to a network, if you wished to test multiple systems at the same time, you'd need to manually con connect them to a test network. We can see site A server two is failed over for testing now its status. So we can actually go and have a look at both the original uh, site server, site A server two and the replica, and we can see them side by side and see they're identical. Really is a fantastic way to test your DR solution. So I'm just going to log into the, uh, the live virtual machine and also to the replica virtual machine, um, the, the test DR virtual machine. Um, and you can see that the critical data file is on both desktops um, and the test failover is complete. After a test failover, I'll complete an undo failover. This is basically going to immediately shut down the replica virtual machine and reconfigure protection for the production virtual machine. At the same time, I'm going to reverse protection for the virtual machine that I had done a live failover for. Whichever method I use, either an undo failover or a reverse protection, Double Tate's going to use a block check some remirror technology to resync the data. So we're ready, we're protected and we're ready to fail over again. One last thing to show, multiple protection jobs, different types of protection jobs. Here I've got two Hyper-V uh, Double Take protection jobs and two ESX. I could also have two physical um, protection jobs using full server failover. Point being, I can select multiple protection jobs regardless of the technology being used and fail them all over with a single click. Now the number of uh, protection jobs we're failing over simultaneously has no effect on the duration it takes to fail over. Neither does the uh, presence of the console. I could shut down the console and we'd carry on with the failover process. Some failover types do take longer than others, but eventually they will all have a status of failed over. So after a failover, we can reverse protection again. And again, 
multiple different types of protection jobs. Hyper-V, full server failover, um, VMware to VMware can all be reversed with a single click. I could also undo failover if I wish to, all with a single click for multiple protection jobs. It may be in a production environment, you may have tier one servers you want to fail over straight away. Maybe the domain controller first, and then a whole bunch of secondary servers you want to fail over later on. This can all be managed using the server groupings on the left hand side where at the moment I've got Hyper-V jobs and ESX. We could have tier one, tier two, etc. So that concludes the demonstration and I would encourage you all to pay us a visit at www.bcap.com.au or send an email to presales.